Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Well, it's time to batten down the hatches again, because here comes George Valentine. You must know George by now. He's the fellow who makes trouble to keep you out of it. Now, perhaps that doesn't make too much sense, but after all, what does in this day and time? So I just want you to be content with the fact that this is let George do it, and let the chips fall where they may. Dear Mr. Valentine, it's one thing to be the keeper of your brother, it's quite another to be the keeper of your brother-in-law, particularly one that you haven't met, that you don't want to meet, that you wish would stay in South America where he belongs, and that shouldn't have married your sister in the first place. When my sister wrote that she was meeting a husband's ship here in town, naturally, I insisted that they be my guests. But, Mr. Valentine, the price of hospitality seems to run high. No sooner had I put the welcome mat out than the word must have got round. The X must be on my doorstep, because now my house is being watched. I am being watched. Well, Mr. Valentine, I am not an excavation... And I have no intention of letting brotherly love dig me into any sort of premature grave. Sincerely, Franklin J. Scott. Uh, sit down, sit down. This is a lovely place, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Miss Brooks. It's been in the Scott family for years. Yes, I've heard of your family. <laughs> Certainly not on the financial page. But you know... That was the difficulty when my sister married Sid Forrest. Uh, the social thing, I mean. Now, please understand, I'm not a snob, but she certainly made a peculiar choice. You see, uh, she was back east at the time. Yes, I think you mentioned that. Look, I'd uh, really rather hear about your house being watched. No, 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 wait. Uh, this comes first. Sid Forrest. Marion met him in Saratoga, I think. He he'd won a racehorse in a poker game, and they spent their honeymoon watching it lose from then on. That will give you the general idea about him. It will. Oh, I've done my best to be sympathetic. Sent Mary and money every once in a while. I stood up against some of the other members of the family for them. And I really had hopes of being justified when Sid went to Guiana, French Guiana, a little town called Jean Cache, it was. When was this? You mean he left your sister? No such luck. He left a couple of years ago to make something of himself in mining. Well, I don't think he did so well on money, but at least it's a try, and Marion assures me he's coming back quite a different man. Mm -hmm. But you're not so sure that he's as reformed as she claims, this house-watching before he gets here. Exactly. Marion herself is arriving later on tonight. And you call me instead of the police because if your brother-in-law is mixed up in something irregular again, you don't want publicity or the law around, huh? <laughs> now I know I hired the right man. Well, don't be too sure yet. You still haven't said a word about who's watching you. Why are you so afraid? Oh, oh, here. Uh, that part's the easiest. Huh? Why? Uh, the man who watches. He's out there every night. At least the, the past three nights. Quiet now. I'll turn out the lights. Oh, I'll get them. Thank you. Who he is, that's your job. I tried to speak to him once, but he just walked past me. Oh, what's this? Side porch, patio? Shh, shh, shh. Out this way. No, 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 wait, wait. There. Where? Under the street light. Oh, yeah, yeah. There is a man there, all right. Well, he's not doing anything. Oh, no, he never does. The first night, I'd gone out for a moment and left the house open. When I came back, I saw him running away from the porch, but not a thing had been touched. He's moving around in front. Come on. Mr. Scott, how do you know there's any connection between that man and your brother-in-law? Well, I know it seems far-fetched, but people in this climate don't usually wear white linen suits like that, do they? But down in French Guiana. There, wait a minute. Coming down the walk now. Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Valentine, what do you think? I don't think anything. I'm stupid. I'm just a guy who likes to ask questions. George, be careful. Okay. Hey, excuse me, friends. You got a light? What? Light. Here, have a cigarette. Oh, oh no. No, thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Well, I'm there. sorry. Slow down, Buster. Get away from me. Not tonight. There. Yeah, that's better. What? I didn't, didn't do anything. Did you get him? Now hang on to him. Take it easy now. He's not going anyplace. Who are you? I, I'm sorry. 
Oh, like that, huh? Please, let me go. The lady asked you a question. I'm sorry, I said... Why? You said yourself you didn't do anything. No, no, let me go. What are you doing here, watching this house? I don't know. I haven't been. Oh, Buster, you're wasting our time. No, get away from me. Oh, please don't. Come on, come on. Empty the pockets. Here, Scott, grab that. Yeah. I've got it. There's nothing in his coat. Just a scrap of paper. Uh-huh. And uh, a calling card. An old beat-up calling card. Yeah, the paper has your address printed on it, Mr. Scott. Huh? Let me see. Address and that's all. Oh, you're hurting my arm. I won't try to get away. Okay, now you're getting smart. What's on the calling card, Mr. Scott? Um... Uh, Mr. Jack McDonald, Rue Dalvaso, Jean Cash, French Guiana. All right, is that you, Jack McDonald? No. No, please, I don't know. Buster, you said that once too many times. George, wait. Look at him. He looks sick. Okay, now, for the last time, who are you? I'm sorry, I... I just don't know. Now, I wonder what's the matter with Junior. Is he scared of George, or did he take stupid pills for lunch? Well, whatever's the cause, we'll find out in just a moment. Now, let's get back to George Valentine and the boy who lost his memory. Loss of memory? I don't believe it. Take it easy, take it easy. I'm sorry, sorry. Oh, any luck with the cable, Graham Brooksy? No, not yet, but a man at Western Union looked up the address for me. He says something called McDonald Brothers Limited practically owns the town of Jean Cash, so we'll get the answer all right. Jean Cash in French Guiana. H have you ever heard of it? No. No, I don't think so. Just what do you remember, friend? That address in my pocket, it, it seemed to mean something. Where did you get it? I, I remember walking up here from the waterfront. Waterfront? I, I mean, three days ago. I remember the past three days, all right. There was something about a fight, I think... But I don't know. I don't know. All right, relax, relax. We're just trying to help you. So maybe you got in a fight and got knocked on the head, huh? Maybe, yes. For instance, you've got a suit on, but just a T-shirt underneath. Uh, what do you mean, Valentine? Greasy hands, George. Yeah, all cracked and bruised. I'm sorry, sorry. So maybe you work around the waterfront. Does that check? Well, well, sure. Only this kind of suit. Huh. John Cash, Don Guiana. The waterfront is John Cash. Or he works aboard a ship or a... Yeah, hold it. I'll get it, George. Hello? I'm causing a lot of trouble. Oh, yes. Stay here, will you? Western Union, Angel? Yes. Any luck? Huh? Wait a minute, George. All right. Thanks very much. Well, that's one lead gone down the drain. What do you mean? He's not the man whose card he had. The big shot down in Guyana. Jack McDonald. Why not? Mr. McDonald committed suicide over six weeks ago. George, anything new? Oh, I'm doing about as well as you did, Angel. What, what's that? A friend of mine on a newspaper is checking ship arrivals. Our mental lapse here says he never heard of your brother-in-law, Sid Forrest. Well, I don't know that I have But maybe Sid will remember him, Check. Oh, you, you mean just keep this man until Sid gets here and... But wait, Valentine, I don't even know the name of Sid's ship. I know. I just asked your sister. Huh? Yes, Marion should be calling from the airport, but... What'd you say? She's out in the hall right now. That's what I came to tell you. Brooksy, stay here with Mr. Rex, will you? Sure, George. Marion, here? For heaven's sakes, why didn't you call? What in the name Franklin, of... Franklin, him... darling. Hello, Marion. You distinctly wrote that I should pick you up at the airport when oh, you got here. Oh, don't be I... so stuffy. Where did I slide out from under this hat? Mm. There. Uh. Mr. Ambler met me and dropped me off here. Did I upset all your darling little plans? Now, stop it. <laughs> Ambler? Who's Ambler? Friend of mine. He's handled some of my business things. Can't your little sister have a few friends if she... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. You've got somebody waiting on the phone, haven't you? Yes, if you don't mind. Oh, my purse. I wrote that name down somewhere. I sent Sidney your address by radio, Franklin, just a few days ago. A uh, golden something, I know. A, a Hello, freighter. Hello, still there? Well, try the list of freighters. A uh, golden something or other. I thought I had it, but... I... Franklin, what's going on? Who's Mr. Valentine? No, 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 no. Nothing to worry about. Just checking when Sidney will be in, that's all. That's oh, it. oh, they never seem to know, I guess. He warned me about freighter schedules. Golden Drake, is that the one? Yes, yes, that's right. Golden Drake. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, thanks, Joe. Why, what's the matter? 
When did you hear from your husband, Mrs. Forrest? Well, he sent me an airmail a couple of weeks ago. What are you driving at, Valentine? Well, that's the right ship, all right. Only one to touch a Jean Cash the past month. Uh, only the Golden Drake is already in. It docked here three days ago. What? I don't understand. Sidney wrote... But where is he? Franklin, hasn't Sidney gotten in touch with you? Just a minute, please. Mr. Scott, you told me you'd never met your brother-in-law, right? Well, yes, but... Or seen him, or seen his picture? Please, both of you, No, no, I... no, no, I haven't. Uh, just a moment, Mary. What's happened? A man in a linen suit who's been a Jean Cash, who acts as though he really does have amnesia, who's written down your address and seems to feel he should be here at this house. Oh, for heaven's sakes, of course. It's obvious. For the last time, what are you talking about? Come on, Mrs. Forrest. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? It never even occurred to me. Sidney, of course, right in here, Marion. Sidney's already here. He's... He's... Where? Hello, ma'am. Isn't that man... Him? Uh? Don't be silly. I've never seen him before in my life. Mr. Valentine, where is Sidney? Will you please tell me what's happened to him? I don't know, Mrs. Forrest. I wish I did. Your husband seems to have disappeared. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a minute. Back to George Valentine. You're hired because Mr. Scott is worried about a man watching his house, a man who doesn't know who he is or why he is there. He's carrying the card of Jack McDonald. But Mr. McDonald committed suicide in South America nearly two months ago. Is he Mr. Scott's brother-in-law, Sidney Forrest? Well, now Mrs. Forrest is here, and she should know, and she says he isn't. So if your name is George Valentine, you decide the only way to solve this problem is to find Sid Forrest. And so you first try the ship that supposedly brought him in three days ago. Golden Drake. It's not much, is it? Uh, looks more like a tin duck. Is this where yeah, we're Yeah, come gonna... on, let's go aboard. What kind of a flag is that? Come on, hurry up, Brooksy, before they swing that boom again. Oh, <laughs> Flag? I don't know. Panama, I think. Something like that. Valentine! Lieutenant Johnson! What are, what are you, you doing, doing here? here? All right, all right. One at a time. My friends, you stand aboard a pirate ship. What did you say? An illegal, irregular, should have been sunk scow. No, no. Is that nice, Lieutenant? You shut up. Come on, Johnson. What's it all about? My friends meet Bluebeard himself. Captain Task, folks. Lieutenant, here's a little sore. That's all that'll wear off. Wear off? Oh, no, it won't. Your ship's been in port three days, and he waits until half an hour ago to report a man overboard. I told you I had a cargo to worry about. I've been tied up by you birds before, and when you got perishables aboard, you can't sit around hold waiting it, hold for it, red please, tape. Please, please. What man overboard? Oh, passenger, that's all. I had a passenger this trip. A man named Sidney Forrest. Sid Forrest? Well, there's nothing to raise a blow about. Committed suicide, that's all. Overboard suicide. <laughs> See, this is my own ship. I get my cargo ashore fast enough, maybe I can barely pay off the bank. The guy's already dead. You can't help nothing by speeding up matters. Who says you're qualified to decide his death was a suicide? Oh, it was suicide, all right. Only now, with this stuff you tell me about an amnesia case... Okay, then let's start from the beginning. What happened? Task barely saw Forrest, apparently. He stayed in his cabin all the time, right? Yeah, just about. All the way from Jean Cash. That's where he came aboard. Yes, we know. Well, Forrest in the ocean didn't get along too well, so he locked himself in. But he was a sick-looking guy to start out with. I wasn't really too surprised when I saw the note. Note? What note? Wait a minute. Don't get ahead of yourself. There was a storm a couple of nights before they hit port. Yeah, that's right. I was on the bridge. Deck watch gave a yell, said he saw a splash. I could see a man in the water. Got the ship turned, got out the lights, but we couldn't find him again. Too rough to drop a boat, so that was it. All right, go on. 
Jose the steward, he'd seen this thing, too. He was slipping a radiogram under Mr. Forrest's door a little later. I was down checking the crew to see who was missing. Anyway, Jose couldn't get an answer to a knock, so I broke in Forrest's cabin and found out he was missing. Come on in here, I'll show you. Is this his cabin? Yeah. I didn't touch anything. As soon as I got in port, I locked her up tight in a drum. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, this is the radiogram. His wife mentioned it, remember, Brooksy? Yes. One giving her brother's address, Mr. Scott's. Here, this is a note you want to see. To whom it may concern, huh? Sitting just like that on the desk, it was. Same place. I knew better than to even open that before I got into port and had witnesses. Oh, you're the soul of cooperation, all right. Yeah. Typical suicide note, all right. His health, he said. Like I told you, the guy was kind of... Sure, sure, sure. Nothing wrong with a note. Only it's two suicides in only a couple of months. Yeah. And who says Sidney Forrest wrote that note? And, Captain, I want to know how many members of your crew are ashore and what they look like. Huh? Well, none of them yet. Deckhands, at least. From the engine room? Oh, sure. Engine crew's been ashore three days now. Why? Engine crew. Remember his hands, George? Yeah, that's right. Captain, you're going with Miss Brooks to try and identify him. Hey, wait a minute, Valentine. Where are you going? Ambler. I think that was his name. A financial friend of Forrest's wife. Yeah, Johnson, I think it's about time we started checking everybody's story. Well, yes. Yes, I met her at the plane. Oh, good heavens, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Okay, Mr. Ambler. I have known Mrs. Forrest for some time, helped with her investments. In fact, that's what I'm doing now. She asked me to. I have to run down to that boat, too. Uh-huh. Well, I checked with the government authorities. Forrest sent quite a bunch of stuff up here by registered mail. Mm-hmm, that's right. Mail things on ahead. But there are papers with his personal baggage to be gone over. On the ship, yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, uh, shall we be going, then? No, I'm, I'm supposed to be in Seattle. I, I know this is very upsetting for Mrs. Forrest, but I can't let my own business slide. Oh, uh, wait a minute, it. Mr. Ambler. Uh, these securities, bonds, property deeds... Did you know Mr. Forrest was supposed to be a failure? Who told you that? His brother-in-law, Mr. Scott. But Sid Forrest really did all right for himself down in Jean Cash, didn't he? Well, I... I don't really know the amount. It'll take me several months to dispose of everything for his wife, but... Uh, well, yes. He apparently struck it pretty rich. Uh-huh. Say, uh, look, you run onto the ship by yourself, huh? I've got something else to do. John Doe, John Doe. Is that any kind of a name? There's no law against it. I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. But you worked on the ship under that name. The captain definitely identified him, George. He signed on as an oiler at the last minute at Jean Cash. Uh -huh. The chief engineer gave me that name. It happens all the time. Well, what's the matter with that? Where's your amnesia, friend? Well, I meant... Oh, skip it. I guess we fed you that idea when all you were trying to do was clam up. I don't know. You don't know. First, you prowl around watching a man's house. That's trespass, vagrancy, and a few other things. Then you sucker people into thinking that... Take it easy, Johnson. Take it easy. Yeah. You cabled a full description and query to Jean Cash, didn't you? What? So we wait for an answer, that's all. Only in the meantime, let's see. Sid Forrest locked himself in his cabin. Now, why lock? I don't know what you're talking about. To avoid somebody who was on the same ship... That'd be one obvious answer. Of course, George. Only maybe he didn't avoid him, huh? But the suicide note's genuine. It checks with Forrest's letters and things. You know, I'm interested in Sid Forrest's money. Forrest wasn't a very nice guy. And as I remember it, the town of Jean Cash was supposed to be owned by the McDonald outfit. What are you driving at, George? Oh, no, no, I'm not sure. The cable will tell us. You remember about uh, Jack McDonald, though, Johnson? Guy who committed suicide down there? Yeah, that's right. Why don't you leave me alone? Jack McDonald, who had all the money in Jean Cash. McDonald Brothers Limited. That was the name of the company, wasn't it? I haven't done anything. Okay, never mind. There's the answer right now. Yeah, hello? Right, Sergeant. Let's have it. Yeah. All right, all right. My yeah. name is McDonald, but what of it? Mm -hmm. He was my brother, Jack McDonald. Sid Forrest swindled him out of the company. Was that why your brother committed suicide? Because of Forrest? Well, of course. Why else do you think a man... And so you came after Forrest to kill him, didn't yeah, you? So. Oh, how do you expect me to answer a thing like... Okay, Sergeant, thanks. All right, McDonald. Johnson will have the answer. Johnson will what? That wasn't any cable. It was a sergeant down on the ship. He found a thousand bucks. A thousand dollars? What? 
underneath the rug in the captain's cabin. And incidentally, Jose, the steward, remembers not only seeing the limp form of a man hit the water, but also admits it was somebody else standing at the rail who ducked out of sight. Just in case you're interested. So Forrest was murdered. This thing is a vicious circle. And now, what was our friend here saying about following Forrest for the purpose of avenging his brother? Now, wait a minute, Johnson. McDonald here was still looking for Forrest after he was dead. He couldn't have been the one, motive or no motive. Okay, back to the ship we go. This case is upside down, I tell you. The further we get, the more complicated it is. I told Valentine, said Forrest wasn't any good, Lieutenant. Uh, Doesn't surprise me that a man would be after him for the sake of revenge. Never mind, Mr. Scott, please. Did they got that steward in here, Johnson? He's down below. The sergeant didn't want the captain to murder him for shooting his mouth off. I just wondered if this cabin was empty, that's all. Sure, sure. Why? Well, let's put McDonald in here. Well, I'll do whatever you want, but... Good idea. Go on, go on, get in there. Well, all right. Okay, now, Johnson, before you go off half-cocked on this case, let's try to add it up, huh? I didn't bring my slide rule. Well, it's always simpler to bet on a hunch than to get wound up figuring systems, isn't it? Only you don't win so often. Uh, you do if you got a few clues in your pocket. George, whoever murdered Forrest had to be someone on this ship, right? Is that what you mean by adding it up? Of course, that's obvious. It certainly couldn't have been anybody ashore, could it? It could have been paid for by somebody ashore. What? This Captain Task will do anything for money. And somebody's been paying him at least a thousand bucks worth. Well, you don't even know that this, this steward's testimony is true. Hold on a second, will you? Well, hello there, Valentine. Say, your name's Ambler, isn't it? That's right. I got a few questions about money I'd like to ask you. Oh, uh, wait, please, Johnson. Well, wait, uh, what, what's the matter? Something new? Mr. Ambler, uh, would you wait inside a minute in this cabin? Well, well yes, of course. Uh, but don't make it too long. Well, Valentine? I was going to say that Mr. Forrest's money gives a motive to his wife. Now, see here. Or to her brother, like you, Mr. Scott. Cut it out, will you, all of you? Keep your eye on the clues, Johnson, and you don't have to get complicated at all. What? Huh? Yeah, listen. Don't you understand? It's all over. Now, and look. Who even says there's been a murder? George! Right, look out there. Put that you... down. Unless you don't get out of the way fast enough. McDonald! Hey, what's going on in here? Put that down. What in the name of you crazy fool? Stop it. Leave me alone. Cut it out, McDonald. Let... All right, you asked for it. What in the name of hell? Oh, that's going... That, that man's insane. He grabbed me and Mr. He... Scott, I told you it was all over tonight. Meet Mr. Ambler. Sure, your brother-in-law. Only I guess his real name's Sidney Forrest. And he's still very much alive. But, George, how can he be Mr. Forrest? McDonald confirms it, doesn't he, Angel? So will Mrs. Forrest when we pin her down. But there was a murder or a suicide or... Well, there were witnesses. <laughs> Not if everybody's alive and accounted for. Don't you get it, Angel? The captain was paid to help stage a man overboard disappearance, right? Sure, somebody saw something. Probably a bundle of clothes hitting the water, that's all. And who threw them? Probably Forrest himself. Oh. And the captain hit him out in a different cabin and later on smuggled him ashore. All those other shenanigans have just been one frantic man's attempt to escape from another. And complications don't worry you because you've got a crystal ball. Oh, I told you, I've got a clue. Stick around a minute, Angel. It's simple. <laughs> Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a minute. I guess McDonald is over it now, Mr. Scott. But he probably would have killed your brother-in-law if you hadn't called George and interfered. <laughs> Wouldn't have been much loss. Well, I guess Forrest thought he had McDonald off his trail when he staged his own disappearance in the ship. And then somehow he found out about McDonald watching your house, waiting for him. So Forrest thought if he confirmed it as a suicide, then McDonald would believe he was dead and go back to South America. That's the idea. And that was the clue. The suicide note was in his own handwriting, but it was written after his supposed death. Uh, how do you know that? Well, a radiogram from your sister was delivered to Forrest's cabin afterwards, remember? It told him the address of your house. 
How do you think McDonald learned about you or that address unless he broke into that cabin sometime later and saw that radiogram? Well, yes, that makes sense. And yet the suicide note was supposedly found sitting in plain sight and left there until today sealed. Well, if McDonald pried into the radiogram, why didn't he open the suicide note too? See what I mean? Therefore, the note wasn't there or probably even written until later. But, Valentine, at least you'll admit it was luck that Forrest turned out so conveniently to be posing as Mr. Ambler. Sure, I'll grant you. But if I were going to take on another identity in order to escape someone, I think I'd pose as somebody who could legitimately handle my own money, don't you? <laughs> With your money, it wouldn't be a job worth having. Uh-huh. All right, then, Angel. Come on. You buy dinner for the three of oh. you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, about my sister. Well, what about her? She wasn't really in on it. Her husband gave her a phony story. Oh, after he met her at the airport, she went along with calling him Mr. Ambler once, but no worry. When she finds out everything he did, that she'll be through with him, and this time for good. Sure, sure. I'll give you another reason. From now on, Sid Forrest is going to be so busy digging himself out of trouble with Johnson and the government of French Guinea and McDonald and his lawyers and all the other yes, things... Yes, that... yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, come on, I guess I'll buy the dinner. You have just heard The Man from French Guiana, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey is starred as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. <laughs>